In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you the fourth component to an effective offensive scheme in Madden 21, and that is the ability to be able to consistently score in the red zone, also to be able to kind of move the ball in short yardage situations. And so I'm going to be sharing with you in this video a, uh, a play that is going to help you do just that from our bunch tight end offensive guide. Now, if you have not got the offensive guide yet, I'm going to leave a link to that in the description. You can get the entire bunch tight end offensive guide for just $15. Um, and again, it helps support the channel a ton. Now, if you've never met me before, my name is Cody and my channel is all about helping people become the best Madden player that they can possibly become. And so if you're looking to get better at this game, I just want to encourage you to click the subscribe button at the bottom right corner of your screen. It's completely free to subscribe and it just allows you to be able to stay up to date with the latest tips and strategies right here on the channel. Now the play that we're going to be focusing in on for the red zone is to play tight end corner from the bunch tight end. Now, like I said, the bunch tight end is one of my favorite offenses in the entire game. And when I talk about the red zone, I'm primarily talking about this area right here from about the from about the uh, the 10 yard line to about the five yard line, this is a very difficult area to score. So we're gonna kind of start from like the six yard line right here. And if you think about the end zone, the end zone is about 10 yards deep. So essentially it's five plus 10, meaning it's about 15 yards. And so what's very likely to have happen for the defensive side of things is they're going to probably shift their zone drops to something like um, this right here. They're probably going to shift their flats to 15, their curl flats to 5, their hook curls on 5, something like this right here. And so we can kind of anticipate that that might be an adjustment that they make. Now, like I said, the play we're going to be utilizing for this is tight end corner. And um, tight end corner is just a very effective play in a lot of for a lot of reasons. Um, but one of the reasons is just because of the fact of the glitchiness of the routes, how they kind of work together. And so here's how we're going to use this play. What we're going to do is we're going to take our running back and we're going to put him on a option route. So we're going to put him on option route. Typically, we're going to smart route that option route so that it goes right at the goal line. We're going to smart route the X receiver, which is a tight end. So he's going to run kind of a corner route. And then what we're going to do with the triangle receiver is we're going to smart route him as well. As you see, he's going to run that corner route for us just like that. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're actually going to take the circle receiver. And we, are, we can do a lot of different things with this guy. If we want to keep him on this post, we can. Um, but what I like to do is I actually like to put the square receiver on a little flat route and put the circle receiver on a hitch, just like this right here. This is kind of my preferred way to run this play. And what it's gonna do, in the red zone, the corners of the field are really the vulnerable areas. And so uh, I'm just gonna go to like a simple Mabel coverage right off the bat here and just share this with you. So this is how this is going to basically look. And we're gonna motion that circle receiver to the right. And what you're gonna see here is that if I highball this in the back of the end zone, I could have a pretty good shot at hitting this, at least not throwing an interception. We're gonna start with not throwing an interception down here because it is very difficult to pass the ball in the red zone without throwing an interception. Um, but this is one way that, in which you can do this. So again, on the left side, you don't have to smart route the triangle receiver. You can just let him go. You'll see that he's gonna get into kind of this little pocket, especially against Mabel coverage. Mabel coverage is going to struggle uh, with this. Now it's very likely that if they're gonna run a Mabel coverage, that it's very likely that they're going to maybe do something like this right here where they drop a yellow zone, like a vertical hook or something like that at least on the right side of the field, okay? At least on the, or I apologize, at least on the bunch tight end side of the field because this is a very popular route combination. But the beauty of the motion of the circle receiver is that that yellow zone can't really get out to it and I can low ball that pretty easily, okay? I can easily low ball that ball um, to the outside. Now, the other part of this is understanding that, you know, again, this is just one coverage you're going to face. Man coverage is going to be a lot easier to beat down here than zone, in my personal opinion, um, just because man coverage has so many holes with uh, these kind of routes right here. Um, now, your option route, as you see right there, you can take that as well. If there's no yellow zone on that right side, the option route is going to be wide open. Now, obviously, we don't want to be naive. We want to go ahead and assume that they're probably going to be planning that. And so what we're going to do 
is I want to share that with you real quickly. Uh, what this is going to mean for the defense is they're going to have to, again, continue to drop people in coverage. So what it might look like is something like this right here, where we drop both yellows. We're really only going to blitz one person. Okay, and that's just this is just hypothetical situation, but I just want to show it to you so you can see how this is really going to work. Now I do like to smart route that circle receiver um, on the hitch so that it goes to the end zone. You know what I mean? But like right here, you see that you can kind of get these in the back corners, just like that right there. You can kind of get those in the back corners of the end zone. Once they hit a critical point, um, they will they will kind of do that for you. Now, one other thing I do want to hit on just really quickly here is what happens if you leave the post to circle. So if you leave the post to circle, okay, let's say you want to do that, I would still go ahead and take square, and I would put him on a little – little. Um, like a little little route like this right here. If you leave this post route on here, what's going to happen is he's going to get to the back corner and he's going to kind of wrap around like that. If the yellow zones are underneath, you can throw that ball. Okay, you can easily throw that ball. Now, I do want to hit on Tampa 2. Tampa 2 is really the defense we hope that they call uh, because Tampa 2 has a lot of vulnerabilities inside the five-yard line. Um, it actually has a lot of vulnerabilities. These corner routes, these these posts, these things like this, this is going to be very, very effective for the situation. So you'll see like right here, um, this is an easy read. I mean, easy read, back corner of the end zone. Now you will notice that whenever I try to throw back corner type stuff, I will oftentimes go with a high point pass. And the primary reason that I'm going to go with the high point pass is just to protect myself from interceptions. Just to protect myself, that's the biggest reason I do it, but I think it's a very valid reason. I want to put the ball where only my receiver can get it. So like right here, here's cover four, same kind of situation. You see that little high ball in the back of the end zone. Typically, we'll do a pretty decent job. Um, now, again, on the left side of the field, I don't want to dismiss this route. This timing corner route is very effective, or um, this, this triangle route is very effective. You can hit this in multiple windows, right? Um, you just have to be very, very cr uh, careful. And so if you're careful with this route, um, you will have a lot of success. So what I'm taught, what I'm getting at here is basically there's going to be a gap right when he cuts right there that you can hit low ball with a gunslinger quarterback. Just right there that you can split pretty much any coverage. You can be cover two, cover three, cover four. Pretty much every single coverage in the game, you can beat it if you understand the power of, you know, just like the precision bullet pass, the low ball. That's really what we're getting at here. So, again, I'm just going to put that flat zone out there. You see it's going to pull the zones out of the way. And then, like, right there, I'm just low balling him. As you can see, it's an easy low ball. Now, if they have Acrobat on their corner, you might want to wait until he gets uh, past. In a cover four scenario, they're going to be a little bit more spaced out than they were right there. Obviously, this is a cover three scenario. So, in a cover three scenario, uh, what is likely to happen is basically you're going to want to wait here. And he's just going to wrap around just like that right there. Back corner of the end zone. Touchdown. That's kind of what you're what you're looking for. And again, in that Tampa 2, and I haven't shown this side of the field yet, so I want to show you this. But again, if they're in a Tampa 2 situation, um, you put that little flat out there. You'll see the deep half will stay in the middle, and you can easily back corner the end zone dot. So my recommendation to you is corner routes and hitches are very, very powerful inside the five-yard line. Um, very, very powerful. In fact, um, one other little bonus setup from this is the mic or the inside switch. Uh, and the reason why the inside switch is really effective is let's say they're not playing, like let's say this guy right here is like in a in, in something else, right? Let's say that let's say maybe he's the user, whatever it might be, right? But they're not playing hard flats because they're so used to you running an option route. And the play, a play like inside switch is really really good. So what we're going to do is we're going to put triangle on a flat, circle on the hitch. Now we're going to smart route the hitch, and then we're going to smart route the corner route. Okay, and when we motion this out. You'll see right here, we can hit this back quick. Um, and you can, you know, kind of do the air truck thing and, and get upfield. So those are two options inside the five-yard line um, that you can go to. PA boot over is actually not a bad call either. Um, if you go with a delay drag right there, and then you kind of what like what I would do is I would take this, I would take this square receiver right here, and I would just put him on a little curl, like just like this right here. Um, and basically run it just like this. Oftentimes, this triangle route will get open in the back corner of the end zone just like that. So that's another kind of read that you can have. But those are some ways you can pass the ball inside the five. If they go man coverage, I, I have not hit on man coverage yet. But if they go man coverage, which it's very unlikely that they probably will just because I think tendencies are going to shift to primarily zone in the five. 
but you're going to see right here that man coverage is going to be really hard for them to run. Um, you've got the corner route on the left. You've got the out route on the right. There's just it's very difficult for them to run that and be consistent. If you have like, if you are worried about them maybe doing something like um, running man coverage and then running like purple zones on, out of it, that's where this uh, you can leave this little little inside post right here, and you'll get you know pretty good separation against man coverage. So, anyways, that's how you score in the red zone. So the the the, the five primary components of an effective offense in Madden twenty one is a power play, a counter play, a constraint theory play, a run play, or a three headed rushing attack, and then this ability to be able to score in short yardage situations, red zone style offense. This is the core components of an effective offense. So I want to thank you for watching this video. And the Bunch Tight End has all of these. So if you want to get the complete Bunch Tight End offensive guide that shows you exactly how to run every single one of these components to perfection, I'm going to leave a link to that guide in the description. You can get that guide for literally just 15 bucks, And I'm going to leave a link to it in the description of this video.